This next story contains some graphic content, so viewer discretion is advised. A recent documentary is revealing decades of abuse at a Catholic school. Here to tell us more about the scandal across the pond is church militant's Nick Wiley. Nick? Thanks, James. One of Ireland's top boarding schools has recently come into news for its dark past. In tonight's in-depth report, we discuss the recent revelations of abuse at Dublin's Black Rock College. It's like a paedophile ring operating and preying on children in plain sight whilst whilst reaping the benefits of being uh, respected members of the community. And it, it, it's sickening and it's galling. Decades of abuse at the hands of a religious order are coming to light as many survivors are speaking out about their time at an Irish secondary school. According to the Irish Times, 57 men have alleged they were abused by members of the Spiritans while attending the Black Rock College in Dublin. Black Rock is a prestigious day and Catholic boarding school for boys aged 13 to 18. Victims have begun to come forward after Mark and David Ryan shared their abuse story in an RTE radio documentary. You put me up against one of the, the walls and he started groping me, feeling me, trying to get me erect. He was erect all the time and kissing me and fondling me around and... He masturbated himself off and he tried to do it to me many a time. The Spiritans have disclosed 233 men have come forward so far claiming abuse at the hands of 77 Irish members who ministered in Ireland and abroad. And he's in his robe and he's coming close to me and wants me to sit down, you know, and at risk of being expelled. I told him, forget it, I'm, I'm out of here. Three of the main priests accused are now deceased fathers Aloysius Flood, Sheen and Corey, and Tom O'Byrne. Father O'Byrne, the priest who abused Mark and David, denied the charges brought against him by the brothers many years ago. O'Byrne never faced trial after a court ruled in 2007 his criminal case should be halted due to his old age. One alleged victim, who uses the pseudonym Brian, spoke with the Irish Times calling Father Flood and Corey rapacious and claimed they roamed freely at night. I was abused by both, and so many others were too. Michelle Flood, Father Aloysius's niece, also claims to have been abused by her uncle, even reporting the abuse in 1997, which bore no results. John O'Dwyer, another alleged victim, claims priests and students at the school were, quote, clearly aware of what was going on. The abuse crisis in the church can never be put to rest until all offenders are brought to light and victims receive justice. Since 2004, the Spiritans have paid out over 5 million euros in abuse settlements and towards support services. Nick, that is horrible. That, that's a fair bit over uh, 5 million U.S. dollars, by the way. What, what is the response to all of this coming out? Yeah, it's been getting a lot of attention since Mark and David's story broke in the documentary they did. The Independent and Irish Times have both done a lot of coverage on it as the story continues to develop and more victims come forward. Ireland's prime minister called the revelations shocking and sickening and said that it needs to be investigated. Mm. Some abuse victims are claiming it was common knowledge between everyone there at BlackRock, staff and students. They knew what was going on. This is one of the top schools in Ireland where parents thought they could send their kids to get a great education and embrace the Catholic faith. They were betrayed by these monsters who preyed upon many boys at the school. And even worse, some victims claim they did report the abuse to either their parents or other authorities, and they were simply not believed. Michelle Flood was one of the victims who neither parents nor police believed that her abuse happened. She was being abused by her uncle, Father Aloysius, in the, in the package and said, quote, the church has protected his name for far too long. And even when he died, his funeral was kept quiet. And I think that's because they knew the level of abuse that he had done. Of course. Yeah. And it sounds like the, the Catholic Church in Ireland has largely been silent on this. Unfortunately, that's par for the course as far as sex abuse. But I'm, I'm assuming it's not because they're too busy spreading the Catholic faith throughout Ireland, that this has got to weigh on people's Catholic faith heavily. 
Yeah, unfortunately, abuse, as we know, has driven so many souls away from the church. When someone is told they can trust a person because they're a priest or they're someone involved with the church, you know, supposedly this man of God, and then that person does unspeakable things to an innocent person, it can definitely be hard to keep the faith. But the abuse must come to light. A lot of people act like if it just, they act like it never happened or they hide the severity of it, then things will just go away. But the cover up is just as bad as the crime. So let's look at some of the general numbers for Catholics in Ireland right now. I'm not saying that abuse itself is the reason for these numbers, but it plays a role in the destruction of the overall faith in Ireland. Yeah. So abusive priests don't inspire faith. The Irish population that identify the population in Ireland that identifies as Catholic now is down to a measly 78%, but that's only as of 2016. I'm, I'm scared to see what those numbers would look like right now if they did another poll. Four years ago, the the number of Catholics attending Mass weekly in Ireland was down to 35%. Guarantee you that's also a lot worse since the lockdowns. Just kidding. But another one that shows you the wrong direction the once favored Catholic country is going, 65% of Irish Catholics supported so-called gay marriage in 2020. The Irish have seen a steep decline in mass attendance. In the 70s, it was over 90%. Around 2007, it fluttered to 44%, and now it continues to drop. This time last year, only 64 men were in seminary total for the whole country of Ireland, and I'm told now it's under 50. Last year, it was reported that 21% of all of Ireland's priests and religious brothers died between 2018 and 2020. The country that was once considered by some as the most Catholic country in the world is falling apart in terms of faith. And nothing spells that out rather than better than Ireland actually making abortion legal in 2018. Yeah, well, Nick, I mean, what, what can they expect? I mean, they spent their whole uh, autumn meeting for the Synod, you know, going over immigration and climate change. So when they when they finally do sound the uh, rallying cry on abortion laws coming out or referendums, uh, no one really says anything, uh, Catholics even. So, uh, Nick, thank you so much for coming on. Horrible, horrible stuff, but uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Thanks, James. God bless.